Hello and welcome to another episode of Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit and today it is my honor to be joined by a man who when asked will give you two dollars out of his very own pocket and that man's <laughs> name is Mike Roth. Yeah, everyone try that one. Yeah. I, I'd like that. <laughs> All you have to say is I want my two dollars. Mike will gladly hand it over to you. Tell you what, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Um, I read it on the internet, Michael. It's got to happen. Everything on the internets are true. Yeah, I've, uh, I've read that once on the internet. I can't wait for you to be inundated with requests for $2. And it has to come in the form of a $2 bill. Yeah. Well, yes. tell you what. When um, we get sponsored with big gobs and piles of cash. The $2 bill industry? <laughs> the $2 bill industry. I'll, yeah, I'll help with out. With you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, this week we have one huge movie on the marquee, but before we launch into that, we want to do something a little different. We want to take a little bit of time to have a bit of a discussion, um, because the movie we have this week is Jurassic World. Yeah. Uh, obviously a... I think people have heard about it. Right. I think it made, what, $214 million in... Yeah. It days. is the all-time highest opening weekend movie in the mm. history of anything. And so in... Talking about that, we want to take a minute to discuss special effects because Jurassic, the Jurassic franchise oh, is yeah. based on groundbreaking special effects that launched, especially the first one, but kind of drive the franchise. And so we decided to uh, go back to 19, the early 90s. We're going to look at the last 25 years yeah. of really milestone special effects that have had long lasting. Uh, advances on, on the industry. Uh, mainly focusing around uh, computer generated. Right. I, I mean, if we're talking about special effects, we could really go all the way back to 2000, uh, 1903, you right. know, if we wanted I mean, to. But we're looking at the last 25 years, there's been, uh, in, in the course of about 15 years, there's been yeah. such a crazy advancement oh, in yeah. CGI technology. And we want to talk about a few of the, a few of the big heavy hitters. Mm -hmm. um, the first one we're going to talk about is 1991, a movie came out called Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Terminator 2 uh, brought to you by J director James Cameron. And this uh, won an Academy Award for visual effects mm -hmm. uh, with its, the T-1000, the, the liquid mercury look. Uh, it was the first blockbuster movie with multiple morphing effects and simulated natural movements mm -hmm. from a major CG character. It cost uh, $5.5 million to make um, the footage and mm -hmm. um, eight months to produce. And uh, ultimately it mounted to 3.5 minutes of screen time. So and that's crazy that how much money they right there, soaked into this. What you see uh, running behind us right there, the, the liquid metal look of Robert Patrick's T-1000 was groundbreaking and still holds up oh, 25 yeah, it years It really later. does. It was the first thing of its kind to have a main character as that. Yeah. As a CG morphing into real, back and forth, back and forth. And it was just incredible. I remember being just blown away by that when I first saw it in the theater. Like, how, how can you do this? It, it, little known fact, this movie taught me how to drive stick. Really? It, it, the only way I could get to the theater, no one else was going to take me, was if I took my dad's truck to the theater, which was a stick shift. And I jerked that thing all the way. Just popping that thing the whole way. Oh, All the way so like I could watch right T2. I, it, it was terrible. <laughs> but I'm glad uh, my dad but got well his. Worth it. it was well worth it. Because Terminator 2 is one of the great movies. Oh, it is. Of, of those early 90s, uh, one of the great action movies of all time. Mm -hmm. And one of those that really holds up, does not seem especially dated. The special effects hold up. There's some yeah. wonky special effects well, in, the cl in the climax of the movie. I think a lot of it has to do with they didn't, at this time, since computer-generated images were so expensive, like I said before, it cost them um, $5.5 million to make three and a half minutes worth of stuff. They had to use different mediums. So mm. you could see uh, a, a different realism. You didn't really get... Uh, acclimated to one thing. Right, right. Uh, the next movie we want to talk about is uh, Fast Forwarding to 1993, a movie came out mm -hmm. that really changed everything too. Uh, 1993, Jurassic Park came out, the first Jurassic Park. Yeah. Uh, also, Academy Award winning for visual effects. Um, brought to you by Steven Spielberg. And this mm -hmm. one uh, was the first real mix of animatronics and CGI together. Surprisingly, uh, with Industrial Light and Magic kind of tied into this, obviously, with Spielberg, mm -hmm. it, it, it brought this textured look of skin and muscle to the dinosaurs. 
Um, and, and it surprised me that there was very, actually very little CGI on the screen. Yeah. Way more animatronic than CGI, but it was the melding of those two where you get that first scene of Jurassic Park, the big reveal of the brontosauruses and stuff that just, mind-blowing. Yeah, it was only six minutes of CG in that entire movie, but it blew minds away. It mm. really opened up uh, people's imagination. It got kids interested in science again. They wanted to learn about the dinosaurs and stuff. And it, overall, what made it great, not only was the CG, but it had a fantastic story go along with it. Well, I mean, it was all tied together. It was the music, it was the majesty, it was the fact that the first time, it was like seeing Superman for the first time. I believe a man can fly. Oh, yeah. I believe dinosaurs are walking the earth again. Yeah. I mean, it really was, it was great. And it was it was played uh, really well on how, how much they showed the dinosaurs, how they melded the, the animatronics and the CG. And again, it still holds up. Yeah. I'm sure you watched it recently. No correct? doubt. Yeah, and I... I, I did watch the 3D version on oh, Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. oh, the 3D, not that great. Yeah. But uh, it's still, uh, the movie itself is fantastic. Spawned a massive franchise. Um, another, another movie, 1999, another movie that spawned a big franchise was The Matrix. Uh, the Matrix brought to us by the, <laughs> the oh, Wachowski Jersey siblings. Brent, yes. <laughs> siblings. Yeah. Um, also, again, Academy Award winner for visual effects. 20% mm -hmm. of this film is visual effects. Yes. Um, and really, what the revolutionizing thing with this movie we see here is the bullet time, we, as it's become yeah. to be known, the rotating slow-mo in the airborne kung fu, mm -hmm. the, all of these, this scene right here where it just you slow-mo, rotate 360, the bullet time travel. These were revolutionary for movies. That helped make this movie... Uh, I, 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 just a monster that when when it came out. And, and another thing that's crazy about this is, we just mentioned Terminator. Terminator was only a mere eight years before this, where it cost so much to make such a small amount of time that was CG. This movie was twenty percent CG. Yeah. <laughs> in, in such a short time, um, the expansion of the computer-generated image just accelerated and it, that, a huge amount during the night. I think The Matrix is one of the in in recent times is had the biggest one of the biggest effects on movie making as far as spawning a new part of the industry mm -hmm. where that bullet time and that rotating slow mo is in use for a while it was getting sickening that it was in yeah. every movie yeah and it was parodied and it was you and it just to no end go watch wanted if you want to see a movie that is based around that I believe technology there's serial commercials that yeah. use it. Yeah. I mean, it just became the thing because it because it was so cool yeah for the first time, you could watch the bullet travel through the air and just whiz by somebody's face. Yeah, you, know, you could uh, see a still image and yeah, all the way around them. Really great. I still am a sucker for that if you do it right. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. It's um, but the the, the next movie uh, we're gonna go to is actually that summer movie that lost to The Matrix for uh, best visual effects mm -hmm. and uh, was the restarting of another franchise and that is the Star Wars prequels. Yes, uh, Phantom Menace came out the summer of '99 and uh, was the first Star Wars movie that we got in much much time. Uh, just focusing on the Phantom Menace specifically, uh, 121 out of the 133 minutes are mm -hmm. CGI driven. Uh, scenes in the movie. There is very little uh, actual physical component to this movie. Yeah. And, and to the franchise itself in these prequels. And uh, it even got even more abundant when it got to the Revenge of the Sith where they used more than the uh, uh, effects than the first two movies it was that they made. And the, when I say first two movies, I mean uh, the prequels. episode one and two. Yeah. Yes. Um, it, it got so abundant. It was such a problem that the C-3PO character they had to digitalize him because he was always green from the green screen. I well, don't even know if you could they call went, it green screen. They at went that and point. changed out Yoda yeah. and it, from puppet to the CG. They did everything. It was. It was. I think it is the stands as, as a testament of George Lucas falling too much in love with this technology that he helped revolutionize. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when you have the scene, the scene that drives me nuts is an Attack of the Clones where Obi Wan is walking into Dexter's diner to meet Dexter Jexter to get some news about the bounty hunters, and everything is CGI, even Obi-Wan's body. Yeah. Just, it just, Ewan McGregor's head, and then we'll let's CG everything. He's a human, we're CGing a human body onto a human. He was so obsessed with it, he actually took the first three movies, which are yeah. now known, yeah. but um, he totally, well, I consider it graffiti. 
Or, or really, he vandalized his own movies. And the the ultimately, it comes out feeling very sterile. Yes. And very like a not lived in universe. It feels just. Mm. It has a, an odd feeling that I really. It, and We're the, not breaking news here yeah. that the prequels are inferior, and I think a huge part of it is that because of his obsession with the CGI. And and that's, uh, unfortunately, I find a pitfall of a lot of current movies is they rely so much on that CGI that they forget about the practical effects, right. and everything becomes too perfect. And you're watching it, and you, you don't get... You're acclimated to one point, mm -hmm. and it's always the best. It's like eating ice cream all day long. <laughs> ice cream is great, but don't give it to me all day long. Right. Otherwise, I won't enjoy it anymore. Now, the next movie we have is 2001, a new franchise came out. The Lord of the Ring franchise, brought, brought to us by Peter Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the Fellowship of the Ring was the first one to come out. And it was... Uh, it's like he discovered something new when this came out. Yeah. To build a world like Middle-earth, to take full-size humans and turn them into hobbits to turn them into to trolls and all of this. A lot of that still was practical. Um, a lot effects. of it is, but a lot of it was the CG of, of making that, making mm -hmm. the, the hobbits appear their size that they appear to be. Um, and just the, uh, I mean, this is really where motion capture came in yeah. with Gollum mm -hmm. specifically. The, putting Andy Serkis's Andy name Serkis into everybody's. Andy all of a sudden so, became yeah. something. Yeah. And this, unlike with George Lucas's prequels, this world felt real. It felt like a world that's been lived in, a world that you can inhabit, a world that is real, mm -hmm. um, as it were, in a fantasy universe. Um, and it just, it, it, another thing it did was it changed 3D. Um, it, 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 again, won multiple, uh, all three movies in this trilogy won Academy Awards for visual effects uh, in the Final yeah, I, movie winning for Best Picture. I really wouldn't mind if we just watched it. Right I know, now. I would we just too. had people watch us up watch to a this movie. Day, yeah. And it is not an overabundance. There no. is a massive amount of CGI in these movies. Yes. And my issue with the Hobbit movies, the more recent trilogy, mm -hmm. is that those have the Lucas feel to them. They feel sterile to me. They feel the CG doesn't hold up as well. It feels like the old CG is better than this, well, than, than uh, the new. Like I said, a lot of the scenes, like this one right there that is showed, um, it, it was forced perspective. You, yeah. A lot of times you would have a larger person in front with a hobbit in the back, and people had to look on screens that were on the side of the scene in order to find out where their place was. Having something like that takes away a little bit of that sterility and it makes the CG effects like um, this scene when all the um, goblins were coming through yeah. uh, more special. It it's really salt does. and pepper. You use the CGI as salt and pepper. You season the movie with it. Exactly. You don't build the movie around it. Yeah. And that's where it comes into play. Um, the final movie we want to talk about is 2009. Another movie came out from James Cameron, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of revolutionized movies one one last time and, and is spawning a future franchise that is in the works right now. Multiple sequels are in the works right now. Oh, hey. uh, they'll all be coming out <laughs> in successive order. 2009, we got Avatar. Yes. Uh, also won the Academy Award for visual effects. Uh, <laughs> James Cameron spent $300 million on effects alone for this movie. Um, forced theaters to change their 3D... Uh, projectors mm -hmm. because of the 3D technology that he created for the Avatar universe um, created a new form of motion capture and uh, I don't know how you feel about Avatar <laughs> as a movie but as a technology of mm -hmm. Avatar creating this world uh, really made big big steps. Yes, it, it was huge steps but he uh, James Cameron, he was inspired by um, Lord of the Rings. He saw Gollum, yeah. and he's like, now it's time to make Avatar. But the one thing he didn't gather from Lord of the Rings was use a variety of special effects that makes it your CG really stand out even more. Instead, he made his entire movie <laughs> CG. Every character was CG. Well, once you get into the world. I mean, it's 60% CG, 40% real but it's once you get into, I can't remember, Eternia, no, that's He-Man, yeah. but whatever uh, it is. Uh, yeah. I can't, remember, I can't think of the name now. Um, but yeah, then that's 100% CG once you get in there. Um, the, the thing is, is with the advancement of CG technology, nowadays, it's it's in basically every big movie. Yeah, and it, it's the, cheap now. Your superhero movies, your everything, every movie. Mm -hmm. your, your, I mean, we didn't mention movies like A Toy Story or a Shrek, the animated movies that were advanced through this, and just 
every movie has something in it. There's yeah. very few movies well, that don't have a CG budget. I mean, everybody who's watching our show, we are not sitting in front of very large theater chairs Correct. in the background. We even have CG. It's getting so we inexpensive have, yes. that our zero budget show <laughs> even <we can> do <laughs> has it. CG. And it, it looks nice. It really does. Yeah. But as you can see, me and Jameson here, we are real people. We are not CG. That way you enjoy the show <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> Which I can choose a CG avatar some days. But, uh, it, I mean, that's just the, the, the discussion is just a point, a point of emphasis to say, how far we've come in such a short amount of time yes. in 25 years to go from what we had to where we are it's just incredible i'm actually excited to see the next progression what i mean is we've gotten besides... the 4k we've gotten the the new frame rate that they tried introducing with the hobbits that i gave two thumbs down to yeah that peter jackson and james cameron it feels like a few directors latched onto this your james cameron's your george lucas your peter jackson um you know that they were the ones that it, spielberg that just latched onto it and pushed CG into a whole new realm. It's I'm hoping there's going to be a step after CG. Uh, we yeah. went from matte painting to uh, robotronics or puppetry to yep. robots. Now into CG. And we've been really heavy on CG. Now they just bring the actors into the theater. They stand in front of you. Yeah. It's going to be great. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be uh, awesome. <laughs> let's jump into what's on the marquee uh, with this discussion uh, leading right into this week's mega blockbuster. As you could say, the biggest... Biggest movie of all time as it stands right now. Yeah, and that's for opening weekend. Yeah, opening you're not weekend. exaggerating. No, and that is Jurassic World. Jurassic World um, opened up this week to uh, record-breaking numbers, uh, both domestically and worldwide. Unbelievable, but it is a beloved franchise um, that is coming back, and uh, let's just say it is a taking place uh, all these years after the Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. um, Bryce Dallas Howard helps run this new Jurassic World on the island, and uh, they, they are trying to build bigger and better dinosaurs to get attractions, get people butts in seats, because as they say, it's very much art imitating life, that people are tired of just seeing the dinosaurs, we have to make them bigger and better for people to enjoy them. Now people mm -hmm. are tired of seeing just dinosaurs. Yeah, it, It's crazy, right? And so uh, we have these Two kids, her her nephews, um, who come to Jurassic World to hang out with her, to enjoy the revelry. It's a great, we're going to have fun checking it out. And, uh, of course, the new dinosaur gets loose. Yeah. The big, bad dinosaur gets loose. Highly intelligent. Yes. I mean, It's he a is, superhero. It's not really a dinosaur as much as a superhero. A super villain. Because he, yeah. he is bred to have uh, amazing capabilities. Um, we bring in Chris Pratt, who is a bit of a... Uh, He's the raptor whisperer, the dinosaur whisperer. <laughs> yes, he is. And uh, he's brought in to try and help uh, figure this out, to help contain this problem. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, look, the plot is very similar to the original Jurassic Park. We introduced the island. Mm -hmm. Isn't this great? Check out what we've made. Uh-oh, something got loose. Yeah, now run. Now run, everybody, <laughs> run. And that's so the plot in itself is nothing groundbreaking with, with that. Um, and I'll just say right now, the, for me, the mm -hmm. 3D felt very unnecessary. Yeah. Um, I thought it was, it, it didn't shoot out really no. at all. I saw both versions of it Yeah. and n saw no difference. It did not bother me not having it in 3D the second time I saw it. Yeah. Cause I, it was, I was expecting it more. I was expecting... Uh, it, use it, man. <laughs> okay, you've seen the walk previews, right? Yeah. And those are amazing yes, when sir. it comes down to 3D. I expect that with dinosaurs. When you have something this huge, make me feel like I could fall off the thing. Right. And right. Uh, I, you really don't get that feeling with the 3D in this movie. Right. Um... This movie, we have uh, our main characters. We have Bryce Dallas Howard, who I enjoy. I enjoy Bryce Dallas Howard in just about everything. Yeah, she makes weird choices in movies, but I enjoy. I, it. I really like Chris Pratt. I loved him in Parks and Rec. I thought he was fantastic in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. My I, uh, my issue with him was his accent in this movie mm -hmm. came and went. Sometimes within the same scene, yeah. he'd be a deep, deep South accent, and then yeah. he'd go to Chris Pratt accent, just talking normal. Yeah. Um, this his character very much felt like he was trying out for Indiana Jones. Like he's like, I can pull it off guys, I can be any. <laughs> I mean, he's running with the damsel in distress. Um, 
he played the same role as we've seen him in a lot recently. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I enjoy that role. I'm I enjoy sick, him yeah, playing that. I'm definitely not sick of it yet. There's a reason he was cast in that. And mm-hmm. there's a reason he's signed to the sequels going forward. I think he was uh, signed on because they saw well how great he was. Not because he fit the role. I think they wanted the role to he's fit just, his character. He's fun. He's a he great is. time. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio was despicable. Mm-hmm. Plays despicable very well. Yes. I thought the, uh, the youngest uh, boy, Ty Simpkins, I thought he was pretty good. Uh, uh, his hair was... Spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> the older brother, I thought, was bleh. Yeah. Um, what else? I, one thing I enjoyed, little tip of the hat to uh, hometown here, mm-hmm. is uh, that the uh, the kids are from Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. It, well, they didn't say Madison. No, they did, because when she called, when the sister called, uh-huh. it came up 608 Madison. Nice. Yeah. See, I knew the they Dane went County to the Dane Airport. County Airport. Yeah, so. when she called, it's a 608 number. Yeah. I love that, it. Do you remember them filming here? I if you don't. mention us, you have to film here. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, I thought there was just enough of a wink and a nod towards the original without getting ridiculous. I, I personally thought the whole movie was a metaphor about the sequels. Okay. Um, the sequels always went by this formula of we have to be a little badder, a little bit more yep. teeth, which they mention over and over again mm-hmm. in four, than the last one, and that's what's going to make our movie great. But I felt like that was a downfall. You kind of forgot about the story and just made it about let's get scarier dinosaurs. Let's forget about the raptors a little bit for two, and let's bring in true Ry- Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex. for. And then for the third one, it's like, okay, Tyrannosaurus Rex, not scary enough. We need to have a new realistic uh, that dinosaur that could kill that one. Yeah. And this one, they're like, oh, you know, we couldn't beat realism, so let's make a fake one. Yeah. Nope. And this is what's going to make it a blockbuster. Um, it, it did work work for them, but that was the downfall of Jurassic Park. The original Jurassic Park made people, inspired people, gave them imagination. The second one didn't. Yeah. The third one didn't. Yeah. They they treated it like, well, the difference between two and three, the reason why two didn't work is because we didn't have Sam Nell. Well, let's bring him back. No, the reason is, is because you forgot the story and you made it about making it bigger See, and, and I've never thought that, and I... I never thought that the Jurassic movies ever had any kind of great story to them. Even the first one, oh, I it's thought, not a great story. Well, if you think about it, it hasn't been done yet. It was, um, the writer, when he wrote the book, he was uh, concerned about the cloning, which was the big yeah. thing that was happening at the time. And the fact uh, there's a new um, uh, site of history where they wanted to mix humans and dinosaurs yeah. and they lived together. He was a little concerned about this, so he made the book. It was a creative idea. It it actually, was. he was saying something. Um, in two and three, they didn't. They forgot that the first because one was you ma- great. Because, because you make your money story. off the visuals. And unfortunately, they started to fall flat. Yeah. And uh, my issue with this movie, especially, is I thought that the CG was actually kind of blah. Yeah. That uh, rewatching the original and the, like we say, mm-hmm. the salt and pepper that the CGI was used as, the mix of the animatronics where this one was fully CG, yeah. that it felt kind of, nah. Even when it came down to just simple things like uh, looking along the landscape, yeah. it was too perfect. And I know it sounds so lame no, saying but something it's is true, so because perfect. because it feels sterile. It, it does. Feels, it doesn't feel real. No. Um, it, it takes me out of the movie because yeah. I don't believe this is real anymore because no real place looks like this ever. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I enjoyed the, uh, without getting into, uh, without getting into the spoiler of the finale, I enjoyed the finale. Uh, I thought it was a great mix of old school versus new school. I did. I thought it was fun. I did constant eye rolling. Yeah, I thought and it was I a lot of And I don't want to ruin fun. either, but I was just like, oh, jeez, through the whole thing. I really was because <sighs> I'm not going to tell you. I it's can't tell you. Yeah. No, it's fun. It's no. Uh, <laughs> when you bring in the, the uh, old school nostalgia uh, to deal with the new school, I like that. I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoyed Jake Johnson's character as the guy who is sitting at Mission Control, uh, kind of taking yeah. the nod towards the old franchise. And, and I, I thought he was a lot of fun as the comedic element. And there was a lot of scenes that I just, and again, we cannot tell you, yeah. but there was a lot of scenes he had that I thought was hilarious. There was some, in, yeah. some of them were just looks, just, he didn't have to do anything. Yeah. Things would happen to him, he'd be like, oh, come on. And I, I really wish I could talk great. about it. I, re- I um, want to say what. Yeah, there's, <laughs> uh, 
the, the thing is, we already know there's a sequel. There's yeah. already multiple sequels coming. Yeah. Um, I am very interested in the sequel. The way this one left off, um, and specifically with B.D. Wong's character as a scientist, I'm really interested in what they're going to do with him and with the sequel. I think there could be really exciting things, not just your blah, Lost World type sequel. I think yeah. it could get really exciting. I'm I, hopeful. I, I'm hopeful, too, because, uh, well, what was your score? Um, I gave this movie... Three and a half stars. Wow. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really had a good time. Uh, on rewatch uh, today, I actually enjoyed it equally as much as I did the first time. The same, I had the same problems that I had the first time I saw it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's a good time. I think it's uh, just a hair uh, under Jurassic Park. I gave the first Jurassic four stars. The other ones are subpar. Yeah. But I had a lot of fun with this one. I, I would have gave, going to see Jurassic Park, I probably would have seen, would have gave that like uh a four and a half, or even a five. At the time, I went to see Jurassic Park. At the time, Park. yeah. Yeah. Um, this one, I thought, fell really short. Like I said, I thought it was a metaphor about itself, like it was poking fun at itself, but it wasn't funny. It was mm. just... And I gave it a, a mediocre 2.5. No. Um, I'm hoping different... Uh, uh, with the sequels, because I know yeah. the sequels are coming out. I, I hope that they see some complaints that the critics made and make a little different, but if... We uh, shall see, but yeah. it, everyone's going to see it. No doubt about I, it. It's it, making money hand over fist. I am obviously wrong. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, let's let's no take doubt. a look. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't argue with you. Let's quickly take a look back uh, for our movie throwback this week to 1975. Another groundbreaking movie about uh, a monster, a, tr a real live monster, yep. and that is Steven Spielberg's Jaws. Steven Spielberg's Jaws uh, is quite possibly my favorite horror movie. My Mine favorite too. movie starring an animal. Yeah. And an, an incredible story about how to make a movie. If you ever want to watch a great documentary, there are several out there about Bruce the shark. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one called the, the Shark is Still in the Water. That's a really great documentary. There's so much... They documented so much about the hard times they went through making and this movie. It's still referenced a lot. Um, I've seen uh, Bob's Burgers, one of yeah. my favorite episodes, where they have the shark and it's attacking the town. It's it's great. It spawned so much and it created a fury of being f afraid to go back in the water. Mm -hmm. um, it just it holds up to this day. You know that it's an animatronic shark. You know that they don't even show the shark for the majority of the movie because they're having so many problems. And the way they build the suspense today. in that movie is Hitchcockian and, and just brilliant. And if anybody wants to experience this on the silver screen and this weekend, it, they have the, what, 30th anniversary? 30, 40th anniversary. 40th anniversary. 40. And um, you could watch it at most theaters in major mm -hmm. cities. So uh, definitely go check it out. Yeah, no doubt about it. Jaws is, uh, we could talk about it for another half we hour. We can, but we do not have a <laughs> half hour. <laughs> we don't. But I love Jaws. It is uh, it is a staple that never gets old. I'm, I'm definitely seeing it this weekend. I, I know we're not reviewing it no. um, next week because, you know, it's not current, but it is a fantastic movie. It's also it. my kid's favorite horror movie, too. Mine, and too. My son loved it. It's like a, it, it crosses a generation thing. It's 40 years old. Yeah. Let's take a look ahead at what is coming out real quick. Uh, the weekend of June 26, we have two movies. All right. Out. One starring an animal. That is Max, okay. the movie of a marine dog who the uh, brother dies and his younger brother has to take care of Max. It looks like a tearjerker brought to the people from Marley and Me. Mm. Uh, the second movie uh, stars a stuffed animal, and that is Ted 2, the sequel with Mark Wahlberg, the Seth MacFarlane movie Ted 2. If you saw the first one, this looks like a sequel. Hey, uh, good yeah, job! <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, before we go, we would like to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters. Thank you to Marcus Theaters, specifically the Palace here in beautiful Sun Prairie. Thank you for sponsoring the show. We do appreciate it. If you want to find anything else from us, you can do so by going onto Facebook, finding us at Real Reviews TV. You can also go onto Twitter at Real Reviews TV. And YouTube. On YouTube, Real Reviews TV, KSUN, will find exactly what you're looking for. Uh, you can find all of our past episodes on KSUN.TV. And if you have any questions about our set, just give us a call. We'll tell you about the CG magic. Go for it. But until next week when we're talking about our feelings oh, no. with Inside Out. I ain't going to work. My name is Jameson. <laughs> I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching.